top-down or modular design. So here's the thing. Solving problems is quite hard. What happens when the problem gets too big? Imagine that the problem you've been given to solve is so huge, so difficult to even conceptualize properly, that rather than sitting down at a computer and starting to work on the solution, you've gone into some sort of confusion-based coma due to the sheer complexity of the problem at hand. Sometimes it can be difficult to solve a problem on your own. It can even be almost impossible to sit down to solve a problem of a larger size and complexity. As a solution to that, something like the top-down or modular design really helps in allowing us to tackle these projects. So what is top-down or modular design? Well, the idea is this. We take a massive problem, one that can't easily be turned into a solution, and we start splitting the problem down into smaller subtasks. Problems like fix car become a bit simpler because instead of that huge unknown problem, we would split it into a subset of smaller tasks, such as take the car to the garage, prod things with a hammer until something looks broken, and pay the nice man lots of money to fix the problem. These still might not be very useful to us though, as a task like take car to the garage poses several questions. But if it does, then it can be broken down further and we split these tasks down into smaller and smaller subtasks and we keep doing this, splitting the problem down into even smaller and smaller sections until eventually each one is an element of the algorithm that is small enough to be programmed easily. We call this process stepwise refinement because we're taking these small steps and refining the problem until they are achievable solutions. We take these modules, we code them, this happens quickly and easily as they are standalone problems that are very small in nature. It might simply be a program that takes in a number and returns a percentage. This is how simple we're talking. We also need to clearly define the interface. What does that even mean? Clearly defined interfaces are simply the fact that we know what should go into the module and what should come out. By doing this, we can program all of the smaller units separately. And because we know what goes in, and what goes out, when we put these small bits together, they work perfectly. And they work perfectly well with each other. And the solution to the problem appears out of us solving the smaller parts. It's a bit like making Lego. The well-defined interface is the shape of the bottom and the top of the brick. We know that if we push one into the other, it should stick together and work. So we can then go about constructing our fantastic castle from just this very simple concept. In the same way, the clear interface of a module means that we can pile them up and make something equally cool out of it. The way that we describe this when we're doing it is by way of a structure diagram. These are ridiculously simple. All we do is draw out the overarching problem and then start splitting that into its smaller problems, getting further and further down as we go. The idea being that if I want to know what on earth the make a pink button module is for, then I can trace the line of descent up the tree and find out that it's all part of the OK button, and eventually that forms part of the error message box. What are the advantages of top-down or modular design? Well, firstly, small problems are easier to understand because each problem is tiny and independent, and we can work out how to fix it reasonably quickly. A small problem is also easier to test, so we have far fewer things to make sure simply work. We're not testing an entire game, just a jump button. Debugging is also easier with a small problem, as there's far less code for an error to crop up in, so we can find and eliminate those bugs very easily. Finally, the small code is easier to update and maintain. Because we know how the separate parts of the program relate to each other, we can reduce errors by ensuring that they don't interfere with each other. And if we need to change that code for whatever reason, then there's a lot less of it to worry about. The updates and maintenance become simple because of the fact that each small module has a clearly defined interface that's well structured and we understand how it communicates with the others. 
With these small modules comes the ability for the development of a solution to be shared amongst a team of programmers. No one is doing anything huge and everything is self-contained so we can easily share out the coding duties. We can even allocate modules dependent upon the programmer's skill or expertise, meaning that we can use our more experienced or specialist programmers in areas where their impact will be most useful. We can put Johnny, who's worked on GPS tracking since the 80s, onto the code for the GPS tracking system. And Sharon, who started last week fresh out of university, can work on some of the simpler stuff while she gets her head into the game. For their boss, it also becomes really easy to monitor progress. Have you completed the code for the buttons yet? It's much easier to find out a definitive answer for than have you fixed the internet yet? All this leads to a massive improvement of quality of our final product because each module is small enough that it can be easily managed by an individual programmer. One thing to remember as an extra special advantage is that by splitting the problem up into much smaller subtasks and using stepwise refinement to turn these into the smallest possible tasks mean we can actually write different parts of the program, completely different parts of the program, in totally different programming language. languages. Well, why is that a good thing, you may ask? Well. Different languages lend themselves to different tasks. Java, for instance, is great for complex software, but tends to have a processor overload and run slower than something like C. What we can do with modules is just write the ones that need to run quickly in C, and the ones with complexity in, we can write in Java. As long as we've clearly defined the interfaces, then we should still be able to plug them into each other without an issue just like sticking Lego and Duplo together. You can, you know, you can build height much quicker that way. The final advantage, and the one I and all lazy programmers love, is that modules can be reused. Have you written a save button? Well, we need a save button for this other bit. We'll just copy it and stick it in there as well. So much programming is about removing the repetition of code and using this modular system means that we can easily get around the repetition of entire swathes of code. But what about the negatives then? I've raved about it, so it is worth it. But as with anything, it does have some issues. Firstly, the fact that modules have to be linked together can prove troublesome. Some programs simply don't lend themselves very well to being sliced up and linked together. So working on the link can be problematic. We've also got to worry about cross-referencing the modules, making sure that objects and material from one part is not being used by another. This can be overcome by clearly planning everything out, but this takes time and resources which could be used for actual programming. The length of time this design style takes to plan is also a problem for the interface between modules, because working out the inputs and outputs, the format and the amount of time that would be taken to do that can be quite lengthy, if it is done properly. This is time that you wouldn't need to worry about if you're coding one big hulking program. And the final disadvantage, and again, this is really a time thing, is that aside from testing the modules actually work, we also have to take the time and effort to test the links and interfaces work between the modules. I've personally spent hours debugging a perfectly good piece of code because I've done something wrong to the interface links themselves. So, as with anything computer related, when we learn about the topic, there tend to be many more positives than there are negatives. And the fact that we can take a large problem, split it up until we have modules that are small enough to be programmed, this certainly has many more benefits than drawbacks. I even use a version of stepwise refinement and the top-down module design to do my daily to-dos. Now that's what makes me a total geek.